You know, it's funny, for uh, as long as I've ever had any sort of fundamental knowledge about Apple computers, and that's been the better part of ten years now, I've always considered Mac OS 9 to be my favorite version. I just really like it for some reason. I, uh, I like the overall style of the user interface. I like the use of the rainbow apple. I like the control strip, which is uh, pretty cool, you know, has a lot of really handy stuff on it. And, uh, yeah, I've just always really liked Mac OS 9. And, uh, I also like System 7. Basically, System 7 and Mac OS 9, my favorite classic Mac OS versions. Of course, I like Mac OS 10. Mac OS is, Mac OS 10 is, you know, pretty and all. Especially the earlier versions. I like, I like the earlier versions of Mac OS 10 because they have the, uh, striped, the pinstriped theme. Kind of like the iMac itself has here. But, uh, yeah, I've always had a, a soft spot for Mac OS 9 in particular. I remember back in middle school, uh, one of the... Middle school introduced me to a various ar array of Macintoshes for the very first time. Uh, in middle school, one of my sixth grade teachers had a Macintosh LC2, and that was running System 7, and that was my introduction to, uh to System 7 and you know I just couldn't get enough time to uh, play with that thing I think maybe in total I spent maybe half an hour on it ever and because uh, <laughs> of course you know you only have a few minutes of recess and stuff at, in, at school but I really loved that machine and then uh, another sixth grade teacher he never taught me but uh, he had a uh, he had in his classroom a Macintosh classic and uh, I used to be able to spend a few minutes now and then to uh, play with that, and that ran System 6. And then in the computer lab, there was an iMac, I think it was Indigo Blue, it had Mac OS X on it, and that iMac was my introduction to Mac OS X. And then uh, there was an iBook, which had either Mac OS 8 or 9 on it, and that was my introduction to uh, whatever version of Mac OS that was. So yeah, really uh, middle school, in particular grade 6, gave me a huge introduction to Macintosh computers. It's just too bad I never got to spend any amount of time with any of them. Uh, the iMac in the computer lab, that was actually off limits to students. One day I managed to get a couple of minutes of time on it before a teacher came to me and told me I couldn't use it. I don't know what it was there for. I've never seen anyone use it. Just nobody was allowed. But then the iBook, it uh, it actually didn't work right. It always froze. I don't know if that could have been a software or hardware issue. But uh, I remember for a long time during my time in middle school wondering that if I asked uh, someone if I could actually get a hold of that iBook. Because, you know, it wasn't really useful. It was there, but it wasn't useful for anything. It, it just froze right up not long after booting. And I always, I always really itched to ask the computer teacher about getting a hold of it, but uh, I never did. I knew it was a silly idea, you know, 10, 11 year old me asking if I can have a computer that would have originally been $1,500 just six or seven years ago. But oh well. Now I've got two Macintoshes of my own. And the install is still going good. Oh, I just remembered. My grade 7 homeroom actually had an eMac. It belonged to the, uh, to the teacher and he brought it in and set it up for students to use. I actually got to use that thing quite a bit. That ran Mac OS X. While we're still waiting, I will boot this thing into Mac OS X for you guys. Just so you can get a look at it, see that it still works. I haven't used this thing in a couple of years, of course. And I think I said earlier in this video that uh, because I've had this thing not even plugged in for the past couple of years, the, uh, the pram battery uh, died. It's kind of dumb. Uh, a max pram battery will only last like a year or two. Uh, without the computer being plugged in, whereas a PC can go for years and years and years, in some cases decades, and the uh, clock battery's still fine. So now, I've got to
put a new pram battery in this and of course I also need a pram battery in this they use the same type of battery a uh, half AA half double A 3.6 volt so I actually ordered two of them on eBay that came to about 350 to that came to about three dollars and fifty cents and uh, I'll get I'll get both of these max and I'll get them in both of these max eventually here it is in Mac OS 10 not the fastest thing in the world that's for sure especially compared to Mac OS 9 and there we go exactly as I left it just about two years ago I planned on for some reason I thought it was a good idea if I made this into a a mod uh, music file player just find all the mod files I could and and uh, put them on here and I have a program that plays mods, simple mod and I have songs in here apparently well just a few move those here I also put Microsoft Office on this I think version 2004 that's another thing I'll have to do on the 7300 get Microsoft Office on it and maybe the Classilla web browser and see how this thing browses the internet that'd be cool yeah what version of uh, Office is this? 2004 graphics aren't very smooth at all By the way, I'm using the Apple Pro mouse that I got for free out of the e-waste box. <laughs> so there's that. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty darn sluggish. That's for sure. Uh, I wonder if there's a thing that'll tell me how much RAM I'm using that actually be useful to know because I would like to upgrade this thing to the full gigabyte of RAM maybe that'll speed it up a bit more but uh, I can't determine if it will vote knowing how much RAM's actually in use because uh, this is pretty darn slow and I often consider moving it back down to Mac OS 10.2 since that does run quite a bit faster but the thing is you drop from 10.4 to 10.2 and you lose a lot of program compatibility that's the only problem. But you do get more speed, and you get the cool pinstripe theme back. Ah, and I just remembered what this is. This is folding at home. Back in the day, I used to run folding at home on several of my computers. And what folding at home is, it's a, uh, it's a, a program run by, I think, Stanford University? I'm not sure. I think Stanford. I'll put it. I'll put it in an annotation if I'm wrong. But uh, what folding at home is is that people at home can run the program on their own computers, and the processing power of your computer helps Stanford or whoever it is uh, to make calculations required to research stuff like how to cure, you know, certain diseases, and it's uh, really cool and uh... you know it's it's for a good cause and it actually it, it's real it actually does work your computer processing power helps them uh... do all the mathematical calculations needed to uh, research this stuff and help cure it but the fun part is you go to their website and they actually have uh... leaderboards they have scoreboards that show how many uh... uh yeah, how many packets? I I forgot the unit of work that uh, that the computer downloads and processes. How many packets of work up, uh, that you've processed? And uh, there's also teams and stuff that you can do folding at home for that you can uh, join, and uh, and a particular team will have its own score. Well, I remember how I got into this was YouTube user. Ada Blossy, he's a rather big YouTuber. He's been on YouTube for, I think, close to, ten, to uh, nine or ten years. And he specializes in videos about vintage Macintosh computers. And in recent times, he does modern Apple products as well. And uh, 
he actually had a folding at home team and uh, I folded on it for a long time. I had like three or four of my computers going simultaneously. And I remember I actually, out of the, I think there was like 100 or 200 people on that team, I had made my way up to fourth place. So uh, I thought that was pretty darn cool. I'd like to get back into that. I wouldn't mind it. But anyway, this iMac, I actually had folding. I had it connected to the internet at the time, and uh, it folded for me. And I also had the Compact Presario 5360 fold as well. And I think I had the Desk Pro folding as well. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I had this old iMac folding. Because normally, the people who do fold, and you know, try to get really top scores and stuff, they have these huge multi-core machines, uh, you know, that just just massively powerful computers that uh, they fold with. And I was just using these stupid decade-old machines that had like a 50th of the processing power. And I had actually made my way up near the top just because I folded 24-7 and I folded across several computers. Yeah, I'd like to get back into that someday. I wouldn't fold on this thing, though. Uh, in retrospect, I wish I hadn't have done it, because of course the processor gets really hot, and this thing has no active cooling. And uh, I remember back in the day when this thing folded, it did get really hot. You could feel it on the top. Okay, the 7300 finished. Maybe I'll try folding on this someday. Restart, and hopefully it worked.